All right, so this is the unit 6i handout. Uh, the first page is deriving a theorem that we're going to use, uh, and then the back side of the page will be just using the theorem. So uh, down at the bottom of page 1, there's a diagram down here. And so we're going to use that as we work our way through these directions in number 1. So uh, we have triangle ABC, and then BC runs into the bisector of angle ABC, and we're going to call it, call it point F. So I have to bisect angle BAC. So let me come down here. Here's BAC. Notice BA is shorter than AC. So when I cut that angle in half, if I actually cut it in half, it's going to hit a little bit closer to B than to C. And the directions say to call that point F. So then the next part of the directions say to, hold on a second. Okay, the next part of the directions say to draw a line through B that's parallel to AF. Okay, well here's B. So I'm going to draw a line through B that's parallel to AF. So there's my line right there. Okay, parallel to this one. So let me put parallel markers on there, little arrows. Okay. Uh, and then the third thing that we have to do, it says let E be the point where this parallel meets the extension of CA. So I've got to extend CA. So let me extend CA out here. So there it is. Uh, and E is the point where they meet. Okay? So part A says name four angles that are all congruent. Well, we already know that this angle and this angle are congruent. Okay? Because that was a bisector. We can use the parallel lines if you uh, look at this right here, this Z shape using the top and bottom as parallels, then I know that this angle has to equal that angle because they form alternate interior angles. So let me get rid of that for a second. Okay, the other thing we can do, this one's a little bit harder to see, I think, but if you look at this parallel with this parallel, and then this long line right here. Um, so let me see if I can figure out how I can move these. So let's see. No, nope, I didn't quite grab it. Let me try it again. So if I move this down, or over here, you can kind of see that this angle right here is going to have to match up with that angle right there. Those are corresponding angles. So parallel lines give us corresponding angles that are congruent. So now if I move all this back, and let's see if I can actually get it to fit. Right there. We now have four angles that all match up. Let me get rid of the, the red lines that I drew in here. So there's this one down here at angle E. There's this one up here at angle uh, EBA. There's this one right here, BAF. And then there's FAC. So uh, let's copy those down. So BEA, angle BEA, is congruent to angle. And uh, which one did I? EBA which is also congruent to angle BAF and FAC. So BAF and FAC. All right, so there are four congruent angles. The next line says, how are EA, AC, BF, and FC related? Let me see if I can shrink this down a little bit. OK, it's a little bit smaller, but at least you can see the diagram at the same time. So uh, let me just draw the parts that are listed here. So EA and AC form the bottom of the triangle. Uh, so here's E, here's A, here's C. And then BF and FC form this part. So here's B, here's F, and there's C. And the question is, how are these things related? Well, remember, we, these two lines right here are parallel. So we can use that theorem that we've been playing around with, where if you have a triangle cut with parallel lines there, 
then you can say this over that equals this one over that one. Well, if I turn the triangle sideways, it looks like this one. So in this case, I can say uh, BF here, whoop, me, BF right here over FC is the same as EA over AC. So um, BF over FC equals EA over AC. Okay, so that's how they're related. We can essentially use similar triangles to set up that kind of a proportion. This is actually the triangle proportionality theorem that we learned in the last video, or the last lesson. Um, in C, it says, it, it's almost the same exact question as B, except that EA has turned into AB. Everything else is the same. So if we go back down and we look at the original diagram we were playing with, here's EA right there, and here's AB. And if you look at this triangle right here, remember this angle we proved was equal to that angle right there. So it's an isosceles triangle. So since angle, uh, what is it, BEA is congruent to angle EBA, we know that triangle ABE, well actually I'll just jump straight into it. We know that it's an isosceles triangle, so we know that EA, or AE, EA, AE, is going to be the same as AB. Oops. Because of the isosceles triangle theorem where we go from angles to sides. So EA is congruent to AB because of the isos triangle theorem, the version that goes angles to sides. Uh, depending on who was your teacher last semester, maybe they called that the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. But in our class, we've been just saying angles to sides or sides to angles. It's all isosceles triangle theorem. OK. Uh, so that means since EA and AB are exactly the same, then I can take AB and replace EA with AB wherever I want. So right up here, where EA appears, I'm going to replace it with AB. So then this proportion up above turns into BF over FC equals AB over AC. And this right here is called the triangle angle bisector theorem. So let me, let me draw it out by itself so that you can see how this looks. So let me redraw the triangle over here, the original triangle ABC. And uh, the only other letter involved in this thing is F. So let me put F on here too. And F was where the bisector hit BC. So this angle is cut in half. Uh, well, if we look at how the relationship works, it says BF over FC is the same thing as AB over AC. Oh, AC right here. So there are some ways of thinking about this. Uh, you can do, you can also write this slightly different ways. So we did little red over big red equals little green over big green. It turns out you can also set up stuff like um, little green over little red equals big green over big red. So that one would look like this. A, B, what did I say? Little green over little red, B, F equals A, C over F, C. Okay, this also would be a version of that triangle angle bisector theorem. Um, so uh, the key, though, is you have to have the angle bisector. Without the angle bisector, this doesn't work. Now, n make sure you notice the two, these two triangles, this triangle and this triangle here, they are not necessarily similar triangles, and they're not necessarily similar to the big triangle either. What we did was we created similar triangles by using these parallel lines right there. So then this triangle right here is similar to the big triangle. But that the big triangle we created. It wasn't even part of the original diagram. So we just used the triangle on the outside there that we created to come up with the ratio, uh, the proportion that we have here. 
So you don't actually have similar triangles that you're looking at in this diagram, but you can still set up a nice proportion out of it. So then uh, let me scroll down here, and we'll use this idea. So let me zoom in again a little bit. No, let's go 100%. Okay, so uh, I have no idea why this F is here. But <laughs> anyway, so in this one, we got an angle bisector. That's nice. Uh, the whole thing's 32, this part over here is 18, which means this part's 32 minus 18, which is 14. Oh, one other thing. I have some students like to refer to this, this triangle angle bisector theorem as the out-in theorem. Because what you could do is you could say, start at the angle bisector, go out and back in. AB over BF is the same as going out and back in. AC over FC. For some reason, that, that seems easy for students to remember. So, let's try that down here. Okay, if I start at the angle bisector, go out and come back in, and I got 15 over 14. And if I compare that to the other side, go out, come back in, that would be x over 18. And so then you can cross multiply, uh, hold on one second here. All right. So let's see here, 15 times 18 is 270 equals 14x. And then if we divide by 14, we'll get, oh, it's not clean. Uh, let's see, we'll get 270 over 14, which we can reduce to 135 over 7. Uh, that doesn't go any further. Or if you wanted to, you could turn it into a decimal. It's about 19.2857, so 286. So there's x. Uh, in the one down below it, the whole base is 11, which means just this part. Uh, if that part's x, then this is 11 minus x. And then we can do that out in idea again. So if I go from the angle bisector out back in, that's 9 over 11 minus x. If I do it on the other side, it's 7 over x. So if I cross multiply, I get 9x equals 7 times 11 minus x. So that's going to be 9x equals 77 minus 7x. And then if I add 7x to both sides, I get 16x equals 77. And then I'll divide by 16. Uh, I don't think that's going to reduce at all, which it doesn't. So we're just going to leave it as 77 over 16. Or if you turn it into a decimal, it's 4.1825 exactly. Okay, so let's look at three. So in number three, uh, we've got the side lengths labeled already, and then it says M is the midpoint of CA, which I can draw in right now, but I'm not going to yet. In fact, I'll, I'll do it right here. So here's AC is 36, and then M will go right in the middle of it. And since the whole thing's 36, if we cut 36 in half, we get 18 and 18. Okay, the reason that I didn't want to put M in there is because now I also have P is the point where CA is cut by B's bisector. So if I bisect angle B, now notice the 20 is shorter than the 27. So this guy is going to hit a little bit closer to A because 20 is shorter than 27. So I don't think I should do that super accurately. Let me that a little bit better. Let's see. That might be a little bit better. Uh, now, now, don't assume that these are right angles. They're generally not right angles unless ABC is isosceles. Okay. Um, let me call this point P. That's what it said in the directions. Uh, and then I'll refer to this part as X. So AP is X, which means PC, since the whole thing was 36, this is 36 minus x. So now we can do the out in theorem thing again, the triangle angle bisector theorem. So if I go out from B to A, it's 20, and then back in, 20 over x equals, and then out down, 27 over 36 minus x. So I'll cross multiply. 20 times 36 minus x equals 27x. And then we'll distribute. So 720 minus 20x equals 27x. And then I'll add the, 20, the 20x over. So I get 47x. And then I'll divide by 47. 
So this one I'll use a decimal for because I don't feel like dealing with 47. So x is 15.319, or it's approximately 15.319, so I use a little squiggle there. Okay. Well, x isn't what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the distance from m to p. Well, let me put p on this diagram. So ap, this thing right here, is 15.319. So that's from here to wherever p is. This length is 15.319. am, I'll label this a little bit better, was 18. So the question is, well, how long is that? Well, if I do 18 minus 15.319, then I get MP. So MP is 18 minus 15.319, which ends up being, let me see what that is. It's like 2.681, roughly. And there we go. All right, I hope that helps a little bit, and I'll see you guys soon.